Shalom, beloved. A word. First, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High, the Ancient of Days, our Elohim, and His Holy Word and His Glorious Spirit. We give Him praise today and thanks for all He has, is, and shall do. Let Thy will be done in our lives on earth as it is in heaven, Father. Not our will, but thy will. We give you thanks. Amen. This is going to be a quick word, beloved. I was actually sitting, doing something else, watching television when the spirit came in. And it brought to me the transfiguration of Yeshua on the mount. And I could feel the force, the power of it. How powerful, how cleansing, how radiant his word is, his presence is, the change that not only comes over Yeshua, but the change and the cleansing that comes over us when we ingest that word, when we become a part of that word, when that word dwells in us, that same transformation that he experienced is inside of us. One of the other things that I remember thinking was Moses and Elijah were with him. And the spirit brought to mind, yes, Moses brought the law. Elijah was those prophets, was that prophet. The prophet that was going after Ahab and Jezebel and the worshipers of Baal, the priests of Baal, to keep Israel from going in the wrong direction. And when I thought about it, I was reading Jeremiah the last couple of days and it brought to mind, there is a, a verse in Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 44. And I will punish Bel in Babylon. Bel is another name for Baal. And I will punish Bel in Babylon and will bring forth out of his mouth that which he have swallowed up. And the nations shall not flow together any more unto him. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. That wall, that fortified nation's nature the wall that surrounds Babylon built upon Baal, this, this God, there's no God of fertility. One of the things about Baal, he's also considered a sun God, okay? Like when, uh, uh, what's his name? Constantine changed the true Sabbath to Sunday, knowing that they had no God named Mithra was the so-called sun god. Well, Baal is also supposed to be a consideration of a sun god. But anyway, he's supposed to be a no god, and because I'm not calling him a god, a no god of fertility. One of the things that Baal requires with this, uh, its worship, it's filled with perversion, homosexuality, immorality, and sexual promiscuity. It also goes after children. Child sacrifice is part of it. A lot of people, when you think of sacrifice, you may think of death, but all sacrifice isn't death always in the physical, it can be a spiritual death, one of the greatest deaths of all, okay? The sacrifice that Baal wants is children. His worshipers are filled with, his worship is filled with perversion, homosexuality, immorality, sexual promiscuity, and it goes after children, child sacrifice. Okay, now remember, the spirit came in the room. I'm feeling that presence, that fullness, that understanding. I can't explain it except the knowing and the feeling of the power and the force of the spirit in the room. 
of Yeshua's transfiguration. And the two that came with him, helping him, preparing him for his own sacrifice. Elijah was there. One of the things that many of the prophets and the judges were fighting was to keep Yasharel from following after the so-called worship of Baal. But you see, this country that we're in, this system that we're in, is actually doing it through so-called open-mindedness, beloved. When I thought on it and I focused on Elijah, and I remembered that Elijah went up against the priests of Baal and they cut themselves and danced, waiting for a sign. But Elijah talking to the true Elohim, the ancient of days, brought down that fire. Okay, well, it was those Baal worshipers and that immorality, that sexual promiscuity, that perversion, that homosexuality, this system that we're in is pushing it. It's pushing it in every way possible. I'm listening to young people talk because of all that's going on and, you know, speaking about the fact that if a guy says he's now a female, well, he's a woman. And young people are very impressionable. They're looking for their identity. They're experimenting. They don't truly know who they are. So they're easily influenced. If you're talking about the tricks of the enemy, if he could take a third of the angels of heaven, this same demonic spirit is going after the spirits of not just adults, He's going after the spirit of these young children and in a manner of speaking, sacrificing them, their image and their knowledge of self, their understanding of right and wrong. They're literally being taught that it's okay. Right now, this, this uh, country's in a struggle because there are men entering women's sports, calling themselves women, and now, hey, you know, you can just switch over. I find it very funny that you don't hear of women saying that they're becoming men and challenging men where they want to use the bathroom, they feel comfortable, or the men threatened, or they want to enter the sports of the men and they're dominating. Um, but this system is turning everything on its ear and trying to preach actually a system of ball worship beloved it's a system of there is no morality it is perverted it's being taught to children where they're gender neutral when they don't even understand yet and many of them grow up believing all it is nonsense they've heard it creates problems for them and then they become older and want to switch, but they're not sure, do I switch to who I was born into or do I stay this person you told me I was? It is ball worship, beloved. And we know there are some people, doesn't matter what age, that they decide to go with the same. And that's something that they're going to have to contend with between them and the Most High, particularly when they know what the Most High says. This isn't about acts of violence. This isn't about uh, besmirching people's names, but this spirit of ball is trying to make it as though when you speak truth, you're the one that's wrong. When you tell somebody teaching this to children, letting it proliferate in the airwaves, when they are growing into who they are, you're actually teaching them a form of ball worship because it's promiscuous and it's immoral. You have a situation going on in America right now where 
you can look at television, you can look at movies, it's pushed. It's just this homosexuality, this perversion. And to be quite honest, before we even get into homosexuality, we can look at the promiscuity, just promiscuity. One of the things is everything is leading with sex. You can have a great singer, but instead of you just getting into the voice of the singer, you got butts and tees and, and all kinds of things grinding and coming up on you. And you sit there for a moment and think, what's this really got to do with the quality of your ability to make music or sing? But when you look at that ball worship and the manipulation, you see, one of the things the Most High said, had he not shortened the days of his coming, even his, his elect would be lost because the enemy is going about like a hungry lion seeking whom he may devour. And to go after the children is not beneath him. They're trying to uh, uh, keep this going in schools. It's, it's beyond just a school. It's systemic at this point and teaching it with no morality because they're young and impressionable and they don't know who they are. We, you have to let the child choose. They're four years old. My God, what is there to choose? But you see, when you look at a system, that's immoral. Now, when you look at Jeremiah 51, verse 44, I will punish Bel in Babylon. Bel is another name for ball. In Babylon, where anything goes, it is actually supporting ball, okay? Um, Mithra, if you will that so-called sun god, okay, which is another name for ball. I know the other terms, I don't wanna get into it, but what I'm saying is the spirit brought it to me. When I had that moment of understanding the power and feeling the power of his transfiguration, it made me notice Elijah and what Elijah did and it, kept my focus on Elijah in my mind and my heart, Elijah. These are the days of Elijah and what Elijah was up against. It's the same thing now, beloved. You have a system like a kingdom of Ahab and Jezebel that's pushing this. They're doing it, whether it's through television, through movies, through videos, through uh, commercials, through schools, through, it's going straight through the system, through sports, through everything. As a matter of fact, it's an attack on people. If you actually believe in scripture, if you follow scripture, it's no more you're homophobic. In reality, it's uh, scripture phobic. It's, what is that, heterophobic. It is against any moral standing, anything that we have learned. You know, at this point, America needs to take a giant eraser and just remove the word in God we trust, unless they talk about some other no God, because it's not the true God, the Elohim. But beloved, I'm going to say a prayer and we're going to say it in agreement with one another. Like I said, I wanted this to be fast. I was meditating and communing on this. I may come back at a later time uh, and expound, but I wanted to share it. Yah of our ancestors, Yah of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. In the mighty name of Yeshua, we ask that you join in and hear us, Father. There is a spirit of that new God ball running, proliferating through the land trying to snatch the spirits of our children and sacrifice their minds before their self images are formed, trying to pollute them through the sensual nature. It is on television, they use violence, they use sex, but now it proliferates until they try to make wrong right and right wrong. 
And we ask that you come in and let that spirit of Elijah be upon us. Let us speak to this thing that you cast it down, Father, and that it have no power and that your mighty transfiguring word go out and shine radiantly and bless the minds, hearts, and spirits of our children and one another. We ask for a cleansing, Father. Even though we are in this world, we are not of this world. We ask that you bless us and keep us and our children. For the spirit of Baal has come into the land and it is proliferating and picking up speed. Cast down Bell in Babylon. Make it give back the thing it's trying to steal. For you and you alone are Yah Almighty. And this day we give you praise, thanks, and all glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, amen. It is a word, beloved. Because the hour is growing late, I wanted to get this out, but this is a quick video. A word. Shalom.